Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. My name is David Ingersoll. I'm the uh, Vice President of Sales for Sunnyfield, and I appreciate you taking some time out of your day today to learn a little bit more about our exterior grade noise control blankets. Uh, we have a, a variety of different blankets that we use uh, for sound control. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is temporary. So, you know, a uh, construction site or, or some building is going on and you need a short term noise barrier wall. And when I say short term, we're definitely talking under two years, maybe under 18 months. It's not weeks long, it's months long. But uh, again, it will permanently uh, most of the time this is going on it's put up for again for construction noise they're doing some pile driving or starting a new building uh, it can be uh, used oftentimes in uh, drilling sites mostly oil drilling um, they're going to be up temporarily or for up uh, up to a span of two years or seasonal for special events uh, we see definitely times where these are put up and taken down after just a couple of weeks. Um, done wineries where they put them up temporarily during wedding season. Uh, different things to be able to uh, block noise from uh, people at nearby property lines. So the uh, we have two different types of barriers that we use. Um, we need the barrier to block the sound, but we have a reinforced and a non-reinforced barrier. The uh, reinforced uh, is a little bit more durable. Um, it's able to take a little higher wind load. It's going to last longer exterior, but on most of the short-term stuff, we're using the non-reinforced barrier. Um, both types can be used with exterior grade Velcro. We can grommet. Uh, top and bottom as necessary. The, uh, the the difference is really just how long is it going to last outside. The non-reinforced is cheaper, uh, but does not last as long. When you look at the uh, the acoustical charts, the um, BBC product is by far the most popular product we're using outside because it includes both sound blocking and sound absorption. Um, it's the uh, barrier backed composite. Where you see the X, it involves the reinforced barriers, the N, the non-reinforced barriers. You can tell, uh, you know, acoustic wise, they're extremely similar. Within a point or two on the STC and plus or minus 5% um, or 0 0.05 in the sound absorption. The uh, sound absorption also increases as you go from one inch of fiberglass to two. You're going to go from a 0.7 to 0.85 or 0.65 to 0.85. But the other difference is just the um, fiberglass. We also do just sound absorber blankets outside. We do we call them QFAs or quilted fiberglass absorbers, um, and we'll do those again with. Uh, a two inch fiberglass fill but no reinforced barriers. The most common way to uh, put this stuff up is on a chain link fence. Uh, Sound Seal does not do any engineering outside or provide any structural supports to attach the product to. We'll walk people through various applications of how they might do it, but chain link fence is always going to be one of our first goes, go to. Uh, once the fence is up, uh, you know, just make sure it can support the weight load of, say, a pound and a half per square foot or whichever the blanket type is that you're picking, which almost all of the fences can. Then after that, you're just going to put them up with uh, zip ties. Uh, it's also not uncommon if a barrier wall is going to be there just a couple of years instead of uh, erecting a chain link fence that somebody may build. Uh, some wooden supports, again, you know, surrounding construction sites, surrounding equipment. Uh, Sounds like I really got into the uh, 
exterior grade noise control business, if you will, oh, some 15 years to 20 years ago when Boston did the big dig, when they, you know, started excavating underneath the roads to create tunnels and passways throughout the city. Um, as they were doing that, they came to Sound Seal. They wrote, wrote noise codes specifically for our blankets, and they started uh, literally installing thousands of them up and down the roadways in Boston. We used a uh, product with an STC of 32 and an NRC of 0.85. Ultimately, they achieved a 10 decibel reduction. A 10 decibel reduction is half as loud as the human ear. So to the nearby you know, businesses, to the nearby neighborhoods, it was a very significant reduction. And they used the uh, BBC or barrier-backed composite with the two-inch fiberglass and the one pound per square foot uh, reinforced, in this case, mass load of vinyl. We also do stuff where uh, uh, people are creating their own uh, tents and structures. Technically, it's an exterior grade product that we would use in this as it's exposed to the elements and, again, you know, mounting methods by others. So in this case, they use some batten strips and so forth to line the inside of a building that otherwise had no sound proofing whatsoever to achieve both sound absorption and sound blocking. Uh, just another uh, a case of how they did it uh, up on the upper side of a berm up in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it was the uh, What you're seeing is the barrier side of a uh, residential neighborhood with a, uh, with a nearby street. Um, they were trying to block street noise. This is Moving into something that's a little bit more permanent. Again, you know, on the high side, there's probably 15 years life expectancy from this product. But this is a, a another drilling site. Um, you can see they put up structural steel to attach the blankets to. There was engineers involved to try to figure out, you know, how deep do we have to set the post? What kind of weight loads can we take? Uh, and they did a, a three-sided sound barrier wall, almost like a Z-shaped sound barrier wall. Uh, other applications for that long term is uh, rooftops, uh, which is what this is. Again, you know, it's saying 10 plus years, but really you can get upwards of 15 in the right setting. Uh, they are wind load tested, but it's not uncommon to have piece of equipment. Uh, up on a rooftop that are too uh, noisy for nearby neighbors. And people will find a way, in this case, they added a, a steel channel up at the top to attach the panels to. Uh, we've talked through the um, Cusco rating, so I'm just gonna keep going back into uh, the permanent applications. There's no reason a permanent application cannot be on a chain link fence. Again, it really is Sound Seal's go-to mounting method. Um, it's also no reason the panels always need to run vertically like they have been in every photo. Um, the panels can come up in uh, much longer lengths, uh, truthfully up to about 25 foot. They, these are about 10 to 12 foot um, or 12 to 15 foot. They can run horizontally to lay out uh, better or easier for use if necessary. I like this application a lot because it does show how people can get creative. Again, you don't always need a full enclosure or even a two or three sided enclosure. Sometimes you will see people do an L shaped two sided or a C shaped three sided enclosure, but it's not an, uh, you know, not always necessary depending on where the neighbors are, what noise you're trying to block. Uh, in these, both of these cases, these were just straight barrier walls. The uh, QFA product or the quilted fiberglass absorber product, the, the sound absorber only product, a little bit lighter, definitely a lot lighter actually. Um, about a third of the weight of the one with the barrier. So you get various ways to install that. 
Um, you can see uh, it does get used in exterior applications and residential if people are enclosing HVAC units. Uh, the picture on the um, on the bottom, you wouldn't be able to do that if it had the reinforced barrier where you kind of put that fold or crease into the blanket and cantilever that top up and over, but it does work really well when it's only a uh, absorber blanket. This is an application uh, that was done oof, about 15 years ago, give or take. It is a permanent outdoor enclosure. Uh, people erected their own steel frame and they attached our sound blankets all the way around the perimeter to enclose this. Uh, what this is is a metal shredder. And the reason they end up doing uh, our sound blankets, instead of a pure metal structure around this, is uh, they were tossing things into the shredder that would sometimes kick out. Um, and they found themselves denting and replacing their metal walls a lot where they still needed the sound absorption, but they actually preferred something that was soft-sided. So they chose the sound seal blankets. They got a 12 decibel reduction at the property line and uh, a a uh, wall system that's a little bit more friendly, if you will, or easier to use with minimal uh, maintenance and replacement. This was a uh, permanent application at a natural gas pumping station. We used the uh, BBC, again, the barrier back composite with a one pound barrier and the two inch uh, fiberglass. Absolutely uh, our number one product. Uh, we got a 16 decibel reduction at this point. The uh, picture on the bottom, you see like a white wall in the background. Somebody had already put up a noise barrier wall. It wasn't a sound seal curtain. And uh, they weren't getting the sound reduction that they needed. Sound seal came and worked with them. They said, yeah, we understand. We got to bring the enclosure closer into the noise source and go higher. It's a little deceiving in that picture. Our enclosure goes another six or eight feet up over the top of that wall, but it does bear bear the uh, thought that when you're designing outdoor noise enclosures, you got to keep everything within a shadow line of sight from the noise source. You got to keep things close to the noise source. Can you know consider how high you need to go, um, and they simply were too far away and too low. So we we just pulled everything back in and. Instead of doing one L-shaped noise wall like they did, we did uh, a series of three-sided enclosures. This was an entirely unique product for exterior grade blankets. Um, back in 2016, uh, yeah, about a little over five years ago, this opened up. It's a 5,000-seat amphitheater at Coney Island called Ford Amphitheater. Uh, the acoustical consultants on the job are Cerami out in New York City, and they approached us and said, you know, we're going to be doing loud concerts here. There is a uh, property line. Granted, it's quite a distance from the amphitheater, but we need to mitigate the sound going out to that. And we also have, uh, you know, very specific acoustical numbers we need to hit and very specific weight load concerns. They couldn't have anything that weighed more than one pound a square foot in, in its entirety from our product. So we used a half a pound per square foot mass load of vinyl plus the fiberglass to just skate underneath that weight concern. In all, we did 60,000 square feet of material at this job site. Uh, it involved about 400 CAD drawings, uh, 300 plus custom sized panels, and we completed the job in just under two months. But literally anywhere where they had the white awning of the tent, there is sound seal exterior grade curtains beneath it and to help contain and mitigate that sound all the way through the door entries, all the way through everything on the back side. Again, uh, for the most part, it's all hidden. I had some unique mounting methods uh, handled by the contractor, but not your typical exterior grade noise control uh, enclosure. Most people are thinking drilling sites, construction sites, and so forth, but there is a multitude of other applications where people do need exterior grade noise control, 
where these type of products really can be utilized and utilized very well and, and uh, are much more cost affordable than permanent metal or permanent other enclosures. That's really the uh, the run through of the uh, presentation today. I appreciate everybody joining me and I hope you have a wonderful day and join us next time. Thank you.